This is the final effect of the particle shader and the bat shader working together. As you can see, there are three different animations. And to arrange the particles in a grid, I am using the grass particle shader I made before, but with some modifications. I got some parameters for the grid, like the width and the height. I can enable or disable random rotation, as well as other parameters for the randomness of the animation. I can change the speed of the animation by changing the FPS. I can also change the number of animations using this constant in the shader. I can enable or disable interpolation, and the offset breaks the similarity in the animation. I can also randomly change the animation speed for each character. I am using one texture for each animation. Maybe not ideal, but it serves my purpose. If I switch to a single animation, I can arrange them to play a specific one. So now, I'm going to explain the bad plugin in Blender for Unreal Engine. Why? Because this plugin is not specific to Godot or animation with bones, it's general. Unreal Engine has a specific bones plugin that doesn't require additional software like Blender. I modified the plugin to meet my specific needs. You might need something different. I will show you how it works so you can modify it. I will also put my version in the description of this video. So this is the Blender plugin I'm going to modify to use with my shader. Here is how to install it. I am just going to open and copy this file into the notepad editor to modify it. So I am going to start with this function. First, it iterates through all the frames defined by the same range. And get the geometry with all modifiers and animation. And create a new VMesh object to manipulate the geometry. And create a temporary mesh and apply the world transformation. Then copy the geometry. Uh, some clean up. Um, basically, it creates a final array with all the geometry. Combine it together. So you can see all these steps. So here is a simple drawing of what's going on in this function. We obtain multiple meshes corresponding to each frame in the animation. Then for each mesh, we get the modifiers and animation and apply a global transformation. And finally, we append all the meshes into a list. Now, this function, in my opinion, is the most important in the Blender plugin because it creates the second UV layer. So we check if there are less than two UV layers, so we create one. And we select the second UV layer that we created, and we name it Vertex Anim. So we iterate over each loop and we set the position of the UVs with this formula. I'm going to explain. We put zero here, so it starts for, from the bottom. So in this diagram, I'm going to simplify to five vertices and also five frames. So I'm going to draw a UV layer. Now, I am going to position the UV coordinates of the corresponding five vertices into the UV layer or channel, right there in the middle of each texel. So I'm going to draw the texels right there. I have to delete the border. And there you have it. So now I got the five vertices in the bottom and the corresponding frames in the Y coordinates. 
So I can displace the UV coordinates to read from the text cells and read the frames. They are five for in this example. And in each text cell, I get an RGB value that corresponds to the frame that is the XYZ coordinates. So it's encoded in the RGB H or half precision. Now, as I understand the loops in Blender, you have uh, four faces that correspond to one vertex in the UV coordinates. So you have to set up the four corners to the same vertex. So you can see in this example, and they share the same vertex. Now, I am just going to write a description. First, I sort the vertices by their index. Then I divide the total to normalize their position from zero to one. Then move them to the bottom of the UV layer, as I did before. And in this function, I'm going to get the first frame mesh as reference to calculate the offsets. Well, I am going to use the absolutes. So I store the vertex data for the frames and iterate over the meshes. And here in this code, uh, it takes the position of the reference mesh and subtract from the vertex position, so it gets the offsets, but I need the absolutes that I'm going, I'm going to explain that later, so I'm not going to do anything. So I just get the vertex position uh, without any subtraction. So I convert, it converts to Unreal Engine coordinates. I'm going to mess with this, so I'm going to to adapt this in the shader. It remaps from 0 to 1. And this function defines the format of the output textures. Uh, here we have the allowed modifiers and some useful variables like vertex count and frame count and some checks, for example, for Unreal Engine. And we don't need it because we use the same unit system that Blender in Godot. We get the maximum vertex count and frame count. That is okay. And finally, I'm going to write some labels for the modifications in the code. So here is one another and finally three modifications now here i am in blender where you can see the plugin already installed as parameters i have the initial frame the final frame and the steep to sample the animation and reduce its size. I have uploaded my model to Mixamel and I'm going to choose a couple of animations, hip hop dance and shooting arrow. So I import the animations in FBX format. Then I'm going to adjust the timeline to the size of the animation with a five frame step. Now I process the animation. Finally, I export the model and I only need one for reference. Here are the two UV maps or UV channels. The second one, as I already mentioned it, allows you to do the reading of the position texture and it does this by moving the UV positions of the vertices in time. As you can see, I can read from the text cells in this way. Now I am going to save this texture in the XCR format using the RGB color space and the depth of 16 bits. I'm going to save this 
a shooting and I am going to save the normals but I am using PNG and REB8 in this case so I don't need all, the, all that information as sexier and I'm going to do the same with the next animation I'm going to fit the frames in the animation then I'm going to export the mesh but I don't need the second mesh I can delete it so I am going to export the XCR file and using the XCR format of course RGP, float half and the next is the normals and using the PNG format and use 8 bits again and we do compression, I forget that and that's it